Elizabeth, this is the first time I'm meeting you. And I wanted to tell the audience a little bit about what happened um, for us to actually meet. So guys, I got a, a Facebook message from Elizabeth and she said she had just passed her LCSW exam 20 points over the margin, which is pretty high. <laughs> um, and I never met her before. She said she found my podcast on Amazon. And I was like, what? So <laughs> I asked her to come in and share her story because I'm sure it's a pretty good one to keep you guys motivated. Um, so Elizabeth, I'm gonna give you the floor. Everyone is pretty nice in here, um, but I just kind of want to share a little bit of encouragement with them about just your journey um, and whatever you feel comfortable sharing and also how we just kind of met <laughs> through a podcast. Of course. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I, I honestly was feeling really down on myself because I failed my first LCSW attempt in February of this year. Um, and after I failed that attempt, I just kind of thought to myself, all right, it's got to be the study material because I studied, 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 and yet here I am, I wasn't able to pass my exam. So I kind of went out and tried to find other study material, and that is when I landed on um, the podcast that I found on Amazon. And so when listening to the podcast, I honestly felt like I was able to um, interpret the questions in a way that hadn't made sense to me before. Um, and it was, it was really, really helpful for me to hear you say, keep it or throw it out, keep it or throw it out. Cause what I would do is I would read the question. I would read all the answers and then I would go back and be like, all right, answer one, do we keep it or throw it out? And I think I lost that just like initial gut instinct of, do we keep it or throw it out? Because I would read all the answers first and then go back. Um, so that trick really helped me. Um, but just talking a little bit about my journey, when I first applied to college, um, I didn't get in anywhere. I ended up um, getting accepted to like a, um, a program where I would have to take a bunch of summer classes, basically to prove that I had it in me to pass college courses. So I had to get uh, B plus or better to be accepted into that school. And I eventually was and ended up taking me five years to complete my undergrad, go to apply to grad school, didn't get in anywhere. So I decided I'm just going to work in the field with a bachelor's. A um, couple years go by, I apply to grad school again. I got into one single grad school. <laughs> I took it. Um, and it took me three years to complete my MSW. Um, and I actually graduated with my MSW in May of 2020. So it was like the height of the pandemic. No one knew what was going on. We transitioned from, um, in-person classes to online classes. And I just had like no idea what the world was going to be. Um, I had so many ideas of what I was going to look like as a social worker and it just didn't pan out that way. <laughs> Um, and so I, I ended up taking my LMSW and I passed my LMSW. This was right out of grad school. So I was still in, um, what does the book do? What does the book tell you to do kind of mind? Um, and so I passed my LMSW just by the skin of my teeth. Um, and it took me about three years to get all of my working hours, my supervision hours to submit everything and to sign up for my LCSW. And so, and now I'm three years out of what does the book tell you to do? And I am in the world of what do I do? Um, and so going into my first LCSW try, I think I also really put myself into all the questions. And we know that is not how you pass the exam. To pass the exam, we know we look at what is in the question, we don't add more information. And I think I was really adding a lot more information to the questions. And so when I passed, like I said earlier, I was just, I felt like, here we go again. I didn't get into college the first try, I didn't get into grad school the first try, I failed my exam the first try. So I, you know, I had a hard time picking myself back up, but when I did and when I found this podcast, I really, 
really think that that's a big part of why I was able to pass and why I passed by such a margin because this gave me not only the tools, not only the study material, but it also gave me the kind of oomph to keep going by hearing everybody else's stories, either, you know, how amazing they did from start to finish or, you know, how life just kind of kept getting in the way or kept putting them down and they were able to keep going and keep succeeding and whether it was the exam, you know, first try, second try, third try, fourth try, still being able to keep going and keep going for your dream and really what you want to be in life. So I was convinced I was going to be the 25 year old who had an LCSW and now I'm almost 33 and I just passed my LC. So it might not happen the way you think it will and it might not be the timeline, but I think we're all our um, worst critics. And so being able to see in yourself what other people see in you was was really helpful for me. And I think, you know, the more the more we build each other up, the more we have to see for ourselves, but also, you know, the better community we have. So that's kind of in short, my story. I don't want to take too much time away oh, from No, you're <laughs> fine, Elizabeth, you know, um, part of the Elizabeth, a uh, part of my amazement with just hearing your story was I was like, oh my God, somebody passed their exam through the podcast. And I'd say that because <laughs> I never know who's listening. Um, I never, never know. So when you, you sent me that text, I was tired. I went out with my brother to get some air. He's like, you're always working. And I was like, I'm trying to help my colleagues pass their exams. And I went out and when I get a text, when I get a message, when I get a, a phone call that someone passed their exam from um, the work that I do, it, it brings me back to when I passed my exam. So the fact that you passed your exam through, when we never connected through hearing the podcast and hearing the stories and um, feeling motivated was the reason why I put the podcast out there in the first place. And I'm just so thankful that you, one, you reached out to me to say, Hey, what you're doing is working. Keep doing it. The amazing thing was that just your journey. Um, you talked about the fact that it didn't happen the way you wanted it to life happened. Right. And I'm sure you've probably heard many um, testimonies and hearing people's stories on the podcast of people who really had a hard time, uh, just as I did, which is why I started this community over two and a half, almost three years ago. And <laughs> it'll be three years in January that I've had this space consistently since I passed my exam. So a lot of people hear my story a lot, um, but it's always nice for my colleagues to hear, you know, um, other social workers who have that journey that it's, it's different for everybody. Um, so I'm so thankful that you came in to share and uplift um, people that are out there in the audience because they need to hear that. They need to know that they're not alone. Just like you learned through the podcast that you weren't alone. Um, and I'm just so thankful again that you came in to share that because for those that are out there, I see a lot of my co colleagues out there, um, they struggle with the exams. And it took me a decade, <laughs> Elizabeth, a decade to get to my LCSW. It was not right away. I got mine around, I think, what, 30, 35, 36, somewhere around there. Um, so, you know, there's a lady, uh, Mary, I don't know if you read her or listened to her podcast a little bit. She was 52. Um, she passed yes, her exam. Yeah. Uh, I think the podcast was called Age is Not a Number. She was 23 years out of the field. Um, so, you know, she passed her exam, I think, last year, her LCSW. Um, when people hear stories, they matter, they're powerful, and they're motivators to keep people going. And I, I'm just so happy for you. And I'm, you made me very, very happy in the sense that knowing that the work that I do and putting out that podcast um, was important. I was scared to do it, actually. And to hear someone pass their exam from just uh, listening to the podcast and the connecting to the stories and connecting to the study groups is the reason why I do this group uh, every Monday, <laughs> regardless of what's going on with me. So I, I appreciate you um, for coming in here and sharing that story and being a part of the podcast. I wasn't sure if you would come, but you came and you said you would come. Um, and I'm thankful. 
uh, for that and sharing that story. Um, it's been a long road for you. So having that LCSW, which you, was this last Thursday, is still, I'm sure, fresh in your mind. So what could you pull from that story for you that if you could, if you could talk to your self before the exam, what would you have told your old, now older self in the past going through the licensing journey? I think one of the things I would really just kind of try to hold on to is the exam doesn't define me. And I think, you know, having, having these letters behind your name, it means that you can, you know, get a, get a more clinical job or get more money or whatever it may mean. But those letters are what I have been dreaming of since I was 11 years old. Something, you know, something happened when I was 11 and I was like, I'm going to be a social worker. So I think the one thing that I wish I truly believed and that I could tell myself back then was that the letters are not my worth. I am worth so much more than that. And so is everybody else here. And um, I'm just so grateful that you asked me to be a part of the podcast because hearing other people's stories is what really truly pushed me to keep going. And so if I could impact one person with my story, that would be, that would be enough for me. And so when you're, when you're getting stuck on exam questions or you're, um, thinking too much or you're putting yourself in the exam or whatever, any, any of the things that you might be doing, I know those are things that I would do. Just remind yourself that if it doesn't happen this time, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen next time. That's one of the things I would always tell myself. But also remember that the letters do not make you a good social worker. The work that you do makes you a good social worker, who you are for your peers, who you are for your clients, who you are even for your family and friends. That is what makes you an amazing social worker. The letters are just the box you have to check and you will check that box. The fact that you said you will check that box, um, the mindset you have to have, um, is important. The resilience you have to have is important. Um, and Elizabeth, you talked about that in your story, and I really appreciate you saying it out loud because oftentimes I, I'll hear people say, I hope I pass. Well, if you say, I hope, then you're putting this little inkling there that you won't. You have to change it from, I hope to, I will. That is not a matter of if you fail again, it's a matter of making sure you have the right support, making sure you have the right tools, making sure you have the right mindset because you can have the right study tools all you want, but if you don't believe you can pass, you won't. Um, bottom line, um, and Elizabeth, you really uh, honed in on that and reinforced it for me of what I hear constantly from people that I talk to in consultations or people that I talk to on social media, uh, colleagues of mine, the mindset of approaching the exam is key and nurturing it. Life is going to happen, right? Um, you may get knocked off course, but it's okay. When you do, you just hop back on the horse. Um, and Elizabeth, you've definitely shown that um, today. And I thank you again for coming in and, and sharing. And I'll definitely let you know when the podcast goes up. It goes up every week, probably within the next 48 hours. Um, and I'll let you know. But uh, your story will empower many people in this room to keep going no matter where they are in their career, no matter where they are in their journey. Um, and comparison, I always say, and Elizabeth, you can tell me if you agree, is the killer of motivation. When we compare ourselves to other people's journeys, when they pass, how they pass, social media lies all the time. Um, you have to be very careful the spaces that you go into, uh, the study groups and uh, Facebook and things like that, because, you know, it's natural. We're human. We will uh, compare, but making sure it does not come to the expense of our own journey. Absolutely. I, uh, I passed my exam about over a year after the majority of my colleagues that I graduated with passed their exam. And 
I was unfortunately kind of um, focusing on that. I was, oh, well, so-and-so, they passed their exam on the first try. And, and that's the other thing. It, all around social media, everybody's saying, you know, I passed on the first try. I passed my exam. I, I'm, you know, and I was really happy for them, but I did. I really did take that as like, oh, my gosh, all my peers have their LCs, and I, I, don't, I can't even sign up for mine yet. And I do really remember comparing myself, and it's something that I think, in general, that's something I've struggled with quite a lot. So kind of look, looking at that was not the most um, beneficial thing for me. And um, you were talking about mindset and one of, one of the things that really helped me, I know it sounds silly, but before I got into the exam, I was just telling myself, I got this, I got this, I'm gonna pass, I got this. And then anytime I took a break, I'm walking down the hall and I'm doing just like a little dance, like I got this, I'm gonna pass, I got this. And so as silly as it might feel, Having that mindset, reminding yourself, I mean, we all know how important self-talk is. The more we hear something from ourselves or from others, the more we're going to believe it. So if you always tell yourself, oh, I hope I pass, or I don't know if I'm going to pass, I don't know if I can do this, then we're going to, that self-doubt is going to creep in. But the more we tell ourselves, I got this, the more we tell ourselves I'm going to pass, the more we're going to believe it. And that mindset really does hold such a powerful space for us. And not only in our career, right, but in life. Um, and Elizabeth, you, you really honed in on that. Uh, we are not our letters. And we are, the way we do social work and the impact of our work is not dictated by those letters, whether we have them or not. Um, and you definitely spoke on that. Um, well, Elizabeth, I'm definitely not going to keep you any more in hostage, but I, again, I can't thank you enough. Um, you made my day when you sent me that message and I can, you know, for me to say, hey, I got my first podcast pass win, <laughs> but you <laughs> gave me that gift. I've been doing this for almost three years now. I've had over 300 so souls pass through this space now through group one-to-one -one and individual uh, combined. And it's been a journey even for me uh, to watch my colleagues and hold the space for them um, in more ways than one. Um, and I appreciate you for coming in and sharing that journey and for connecting with me um, and listening um, and feeling encouraged. And this is a good testament to you know everyone uh, regarding how important it is to share your story, no matter what it looks like, because you never know who you're going to impact in your journey, period. You'll never know. Sometimes they'll, you'll, so they'll come up and say, hey, you help me. Sometimes they won't. That goes for our clients and anyone we come into contact with as social workers. So thank you again, Elizabeth. And with that, congratulations on that LCSW. Definitely stay in contact with me. Uh, there's definitely things I would want to talk to you about regarding your professional development. What's next for you? Um, if I can be of service to you in any way, um, definitely would love to help you. So with that, um, we'll close with the podcast section. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on and for, you know, allowing me to share my story. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day. It's beautiful here. I hope everybody has a wonderful, beautiful day. And I won't take any more time away from the uh, test questions. Oh, you have not. No. <laughs> uh, they, they, believe me, Elizabeth, they need this kick in the butt. <laughs> <It's part laughs> of, they, they don't. You know, they listen to, they hear my story every, every Monday the, for the last, some of them for over two and a half years now. So a lot of them know my story pretty well, but it's always refreshing. Uh, when colleagues come in and, and they share their story and their connection, their impact. Um, it's a beautiful gift that um, they love. And Turkisha says, congratulations, Elizabeth, in the comments. Uh, but I'm sure everybody um, in this room felt your, your share in your story and you did not take up any time. The questions will be there, but it's always good for them to get encouragement too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We'll have a wonderful rest of your session, guys, and we'll definitely keep in touch. I'd love to connect with uh, future things. Please do, Elizabeth, and you take care. And I'll definitely probably um, send you a Facebook message so we can connect off of here. With that, Elizabeth, I will let you go.
All righty. Thank you. Have a great You're night, welcome. everybody.